Yeah, like if you found out your grandfather killed 50 billion people, you'd be like, well... <laughs> well, he's just old. You know... Fucking boomers. <laughs> Captain's Pod, Stardate 4408.22.2. Welcome aboard the Starship's Enterprise, and thank you for joining us as we take a brief shore leave from the world of cinema sins to explore the universe of Star Trek. I am your Captain Ian Whittington, and with me as always, she's like that tune you just can't get out of your head. It's Danae Hughes. <laughs> you wish it was that tune. Um, oh, come on, why can't I? You'll find out. And this week, Ambassador, we have a special guest that has just beamed in. He's responsible for an accidental genocide, but it's okay because he apologized. It's Jonathan Watkins. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. I'm sorry. I... What? <laughs> Both. Were you in... aware of this, Jonathan? <laughs> well, it's funny because that is actually something if anyone was at Sin Week, they would get. But if they haven't heard the Sin Week podcast, because I don't think that's been released yet, right? No, it hasn't. Not yet. But I wasn't even referring to that. I was referring oh. to this episode that we're about to cover. Oh, yeah, Both yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Relate to this episode. That's interesting. The two captain's pods I've been on, I've talked about episodes <laughs> that revolve around genocides. That's great. What's amazing is that we will be releasing that. Um, the, the So this is the live show that happened at Sin Week at the beginning of the year. And we will be releasing the audio for that soon. Um, you can listen to it now if you join the Sin Club at patreon.com. Um, but what's interesting is that we also talk about Conundrum last week. We actually, the episode that we covered last week, we accidentally talk about it at Sin Week as well, which is amazing. Oh, wow, really? We talked about Conundrum at Sunweek? We did. I can't remember how, but it came up. It's just random. Um, Yeah, no, so yeah, Kevin uh, and Janeway uh, both, you know, commit genocide. That's how they they do. That's how Star Trek legend went. Well, Jonathan, welcome aboard the Sin Surprise for the first time. Who the hell are you and what are you doing on my ship? Oh, oh, listen, if you don't know who Jonathan is, we got (laughs) problems. Uh, There's probably people, non CinemaSins people that listen to Kevin. Everyone knows who you are, Jonathan. Well, thank Everybody. you. Everybody. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm Jonathan. Uh, I am also CinemaSins. I write for all things under that name and uh, do the Behind the Sins podcast, which is, I guess, on hiatus right now. But we've had many, many episodes you can go back and listen to, and I'm on there. And uh, I father a little girl. I, don't know, I do stuff like that. You know. Just casual stuff like that. Oh, and she's she is my daughter. I, yes. That sounded weird. <laughs> like, I know. That's fine. That still works. It's like it's like it's like, I'm, it's like I almost send it. Sound like I'm. It's one of those things where I'm sending ninety nine cents a month or whatever. To, <laughs> no, 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 no. To yes. feed you somebody. can support him so that he can yes. father more children. Wait, amazing. No. Wait, no, <laughs> that's not. That's I'm, not right. I'm good with one. Yeah. I'm so glad you're finally on the show because me too. Uh, Jonathan is a huge Star Trek fan as well. I super I Trek am. nerd. I think because Daniel is too, right? So I think like mm-hmm. four out of seven. And Danae, I mean, you're you're in that club. So I think club. I'm in yeah. the club. It's you like- are definitely in the club. You like Sabrosa. You're in the club. What is wrong with Chris and Aaron? <laughs> right? What is wrong? Well, We've had Aaron, Aaron on the show. <laughs> Aaron's been on the show. He actually <laughs> seems to enjoy it. Or no, he's he lying really well. Uh, Who knows? I just don't think he'd be like me and Ian and go back and like rewatch entire over and over and over again. And, yeah, no, no, no. but or it was for really the first time. F- it was really mm-hmm. fun when Ian joined the team and then started to express his Star Trek nerddom like really confidently, and then real and everyone's like, "Yeah, we love Star Trek too." Ian's like, "Wait, really?" And, and then and Jonathan's like, "Yeah, I'm I am the resident Star Trek nerd here," and Chris is like. <laughs> He's like looking around, like, wait, wait, did our team just explode? And then Jeremy's like, hold on, I love Star Trek. Yeah, Jeremy was like, I thought I was the Star Trek guy. What's going and, on? And it was like, it was like if everybody had a trench coat and like you open it up and show like your secret wares on the inside, and there's this whole yeah. section of the badges. inner trench court, it's just com badges. <laughs> yeah, and everyone's like, you too, and it was this adorable <laughs> thing. So it's, great. It, it's been a long time coming for Jonathan to be on the show, is what I'm saying. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love talk because I'm like. I don't know, 14 years older than Ian, something like that. That sounds uh, right. 16, 14. No, 14, 14. Um, Are you about to flex how much longer you've been a fan no, of no, Star no, Trek no, based no, on no, your age? No, no I liked it before you were not born, sucker. Fact, I mean, I can, I can talk about my history with Star Trek, if I, but I, that's, not what I, that's not what I meant. But what I was trying to say was it's fun talking to someone that came up like 
that came up with a, maybe a different series was their first, you know, that kind of thing. Like came up, it's kind of like, it's kind of like how like, you know, you talk, I talk to people that, you know, like I grew up with the original Star Wars films and then mm. I talk to people that their first Star Wars films were the prequels and some people now their first Star Wars films were, you know, For- Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like that with Star Trek. It's always interesting to talk to and to see like, you know, you know, what, do you still like the older stuff more? Mm-hmm. Or do you prefer, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, as far as me, so I, my mom uh, was into it enough to where she always wanted to go see the movies. So mm-hmm. um, I, the first one, I, I don't remember the motion picture. I was told I was at the theater, but I was only like two. So I, I don't remember it. Uh, but I remember going to see Khan um, mm-hmm. and, then, and, and then everything after that. But I only pretty much watch the movies. I, I think I watch the original series occasionally, like when it was on, because it was always on in reruns in the 80s. So, but I never like just sat down and was like, I'm going to watch this from beginning to end. It was never anything like that. And then Next Generation premiered in 87. I watched the premiere. I remember that very well because that was a big deal. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. And um, I don't think I watched it like consistently, though. Like I would watch it here and there. In fact, the episode we're going to talk about today, I'm not even sure the first time I watched it. But when Deep Space Nine got announced, for whatever reason, that was, I was, so that came out, what, 93? 92? It started 93, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it started halfway through season six of TNG, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. So, but like in the fall of like 92, like that, I was, so I was like, I was 16. So I was reading like a lot of magazines and stuff at that point. So I read a lot about the, like the beginnings of Deep Space Nine, the production I had been keeping. So that one just for whatever reason caught my attention. So I started watching that when it premiered. And then because I was getting into that, I went back and like TNG was rerunning at night. So I, I went back and caught up with everything and, uh, and, and watched the original series. And then pretty much starting from Deep Space Nine, I've, I watched them all when they were on. Like I watched Voyager and Enterprise and Discovery and so since then. But um yeah, that's just so that's kind of where I'm at. I'd say I'm more of a I mean, I I, I like the new stuff fine. Like I'm not I, I not like I'm loving I love what I've seen of Strange New Worlds. Mm, um I like yeah. at least Good, because little... if you said otherwise, I was gonna be No, no, no. You I just said I'm not counts. fully caught up on it, but I've loved what I've watched. Uh Picard, I liked the first season fine, didn't really care for the second. Uh, yep. Discovery, I have a love hate relationship with, but um, but I I just I just like seeing Star Trek, so they can yeah, keep right? making shows until I'm old and gray. I don't care. Trek and fans, I, and we're I, just happy to see it on TV. I think exactly. Well, and I just and I love seeing other people like become fans, and mm-hmm. that's just fun. Um, if you stay, I, you know, I always feel if you if you keep things the exact same, you're never going to get like new fans. I mean, things have to change. I think things have to evolve and. Which is why we're going to see a future Star Trek where the Federation has been annihilated. <laughs> Wait, what? What do you know that we don't? <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, it's one of my favorite things as well is with the new wave of people that have watched Strange New Worlds in particular, they're now going back and doing rewatches of TNG mm-hmm. and Deep Space Nine. And even like TNG fans are going back and rewatching Deep Space Nine for the first time. Yeah. And are just like, this is incredible. This is like serialized tv this is like lost and stuff and game of thrones yeah. and we're like fuck yeah star trek that's, did it first and that's why i get i, I get why d space nine is not the most popular because for something to do well in syndication it, it's got to yeah, just be 100%. it's got to be super approachable it's got to be mm-hmm. like where you could just come in at any point d space nine's really hard to just come in yeah um, especially those later seasons yeah um, but it's the same as whereas, game of thrones you wouldn't just pick up game of yeah, thrones yeah exactly randomly. exactly watch it all. um but yeah, no, all good stuff. I I I, I like and I like like you said. I just like people coming in, and uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I like there being Trek out there again. It was really sad for me when there was like no TV show for the longest time because I grew up when there was always a show on. Mm-hmm. You know, it and, hurts when there's that gap of a few years where it's like, is it ever going to be back again? <laughs> but it's it's here for a good run by the looks of it. The stuff people complain about too is always interesting to me because I'll hear stuff like you know Star Trek's woke now and blah 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 and it's like did oh you watch goodness. TNG or in- <laughs> what were you watching? And then I've heard people say too like it like it focuses more like when like I remember when Deep Space Nine introduced Section Thirty One there were a lot of like Trek fans that were like that's not that's not Star Trek they're not like military like that it's like did you watch the original series like it was one hundred percent a military institution hmm. like hierarchies and you know yeah, everything that now came up last episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So mm-hmm. anyway, sorry. So this week we're going to do season three, episode three of Star Trek The Next Generation, The Survivors. So without giving anything away, 
Jonathan. Season three, uh-huh. episode three. Yep. Don't Can be I picking follow a random instructions episode. this year <laughs> or this, well, this day? Last week, Danae started watching Lower Decks instead of Conundrum because she picked the wrong button. Which is great. <laughs> the episode but so Lower Decks. The episode else. Lower Decks. Yeah. That's so a great did episode. Someone else. Yep. So did someone else on Twitter. Also accidentally watched the exact same wrong one, and I think it's because it started auto playing the next one after Sub Rosa. Yeah. So, so you I have guys to double were like check having a great time. And... We were having a confusing time is what we were having. But yeah. You okay, got, so... If you're ever going to cover the Lower Deck show, though, you should cover the TNG episode first. And That's the, you almost have some sneaky foresight into future plans. Winky, winky. No, that's, that is one of my favorite episodes. I love it that is, episode. It is good. It is good. Um, so why did you pick the survivors without giving um, anything away to the ambassador? Well, I sent, I sent like three possibilities and i think we settled on this one um mm-hmm. i guess i don't have to mention what the other two are because maybe i get to come back and talk about it Heck but yeah. um you never know nah, we'll but, see how uh, it goes <laughs> <laughs> no this is one I, I this is one that kind of like i don't know when i first saw it but uh well first off i will say this the first two seasons of next generation there's definitely there's definitely good episodes but like it's hard to watch like especially when you go back and rewatch the those first yeah. two seasons are just rough but it's crazy how like season three almost from the get-go just feels like a completely different show and Mm -hmm. it's just it's got and i mean to be fair season two there a lot of the issues were the writer strike and stuff like that was going on so they had to go and use like old scripts from like other series that were supposed to happen and all kinds of there's all kinds of craziness if you ever want to read about just it's amazing they even got 20 episodes out that season i don't i don't Mm -hmm. know how they did it um but anyway, season three is just where I feel like Next Generation gets really strong. And at least for the next like three seasons is just almost every week. It's, you know, it's pretty great. Uh, Survivors is an episode that I don't think I liked it very much when I first watched it. I just don't think I, I don't know, for whatever reason, it didn't catch my interest. But I would hear people talk about it every now and then. Like, oh, this is kind of an underappreciated one. And then I came back to it maybe like five or six years ago was the last time I watched it. And it did, it did hit me differently. Um, I think it's got a really interesting villain. Um, I think that it's possible that, I mean, obviously like the Borg and the Romulans, I mean, if you took a group of villains, but as far as just like a single person, like, I mean, this, like if they had wanted to, like this could have been Picard's con, you know, like it really could have been, if they, I mean, I'm not saying, I think it, I'm not saying they should have done that. I'm just saying like you, you, it's that type of villain, like where I, you know, you could probably make a movie around this person and, um, I don't know. There's a there's a mystery that uh, you know, and that's always fun. And you know, Next Generation did a, tried to do a lot of mysteries. I or Star Trek in general tries to do a lot of mysteries. I don't know that they're always that successful. Uh, but I thought this one, I thought this one worked really well. Season three, episode three. Season three, episode three, the survivors. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm looking at the thumbnail on Paramount uh, Plus, yeah. and it's Data, and he's holding yes, what appears correct. to be. A Beauty and the Beast looking container with spoilers, the Wilty spoilers, Rose too thingy. Many spoilers. What do you mean? <laughs> you ruined the spoiler. episode. This what is it. You mean? ruined it. Well, you know, Data took a honeycomb and a, I can't even remember what that line was from Game of Thrones. So. Oh, jeez, oh. Lapeat. <laughs> and a donkey into a brothel or whatever. Yeah. Which, what the f- are his final words in the entire series? <laughs> Amazing. Right. Well, before Game of Thrones or Star Trek gets spoiled anymore, let's head over to Ten Forward after we've discussed the episode we're about to watch. Three but to wait beam a second. Out. What? The thumbnail beside Survivors has Riker and Troy as Don't touch it. Romulan? Don't touch <gasps> it. Leave it. Ooh, what's that? Leave it. What's Stop. that? Stop it. No. Okay. Okay. They're All proto- right. Fine. They All are right. proto Romulans, not actual Romulans. I think that episode is called Who Watches the Watchers? It is. That's it the sure next episode. Is. Yes. From a <laughs> thumbnail, people. Welcome to Ten Forward, the part of the show where we grab a drink from the replicator and share our immediate thoughts and feelings on the episode we just watched. Most important question first, Jonathan, what would you like from the replicator? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm so boring. I'll just have a diet, Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper? Yeah, yeah there we go. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. he knew it. He knew it I already. Knew it. Jo- uh, uh, Danae, what would you like? Um, I would like to Not a tune. Have- Wow, it's weird, uh, everybody. Is a Diet Dr. Pepper just appeared? <laughs> Look at wow. that. Wow. <laughs> okay, I'll follow suit. Whoa, water just appeared for me <laughs> in a glass Weirdly, jar. I have zero sugar Pepsi today, though. But Oh, that, that is odd. Well, I'm going to order a, a new species to replace the Hushnuck. Um, <laughs> Ooh, 
So, immediate thoughts and feelings, Danae. What did you think of the episode? No, sorry, episode summary. The Enterprise visits a planet that should be filled with people, but it is not. There are only two people surviving on a little patch of grass and a house after the entire colony has been destroyed by a mysterious alien. And as Deanna goes insane, not all it seems. Basically, every single episode can finish with, and not all is as it seems, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Danae, what did you think of the, the mystery in the episode? Wow. It's good, isn't it? This is a really interesting episode. Mm-hmm. This is one where we just kind of scoot the fuck away from that alien. <laughs> yeah, bye. It's time to GTFO. <laughs> We're just going to leave you down there with your little hook trap thing and pretend this never happened and thanks for the tea. Yeah, like I don't remember seeing episodes that sort of land where this one lands Uh where it's like okay you know we're just gonna solve this mystery and then we're just never (laughs) going to come back to this planet ever again send out some signal boy buoys and make sure nobody goes near this guy yeah it's sort of like a um uh we solve the mystery so we can all leave this episode feeling a little bit more confident in what the fuck Mm -hmm. is going on but then also at the same time there's just this big old like don't open this door again like a pandora's uh-huh. box sort of vibe so yeah what a really interesting episode i'm glad it's, you picked it it's so interesting i love it um jonathan now that you can actually talk about it spoilery oh i was spoilery-ish, gonna ask completely spoilery then yeah what, what do you love about it i mean this is like what the i think the best episodes of star trek are like this where they present like just these interesting not necessarily mysteries like you have in this but just these what do i want to say you want to call it a moral dilemma, but it's not a dilemma. Uh, like, yeah, because I mean that's the clear, thing, right? But... It's but it's interesting <laughs> because you've got a, a, a definitely a villain in Kevin Uxbridge. Is that right? Mm-hmm. But yep, um, Kevin mm-hmm. he's responsible for the deaths the of millions of an entire alien species, whatever that is. I think yep. does he say like five hundred million? Is that what he says? He said fifty, 50 million billion. or fifty billion. Fifty billion. I, I think, think it was it, a billion. Yeah, I think so. so too. Yeah, but it's interesting. But at, at, but uh, but on the other side of that. You, you feel bad for him. <laughs> like, you actually right? kind of have some, like, it's weird to have, I don't know if that's sympathy, but it's just like, I don't know. It's like, and I think those are my favorite Star Trek episodes, the ones that just kind of make me, like, uh, you know, question yeah. stuff like that. Because, like, if you just watch the mm-hmm. movies, I think you're thinking more like battles and stuff like that. But I think a lot of the best, not that they didn't do battles on the mm-hmm. series, they definitely did that sometimes. But this one almost reminds me of, like, almost like a Twilight Zone episode or something. Like, it's just... Mm. It's yes. just it's got that vibe to it, which I I really dig when they kind of go that route. So mm. make me question yeah. everything. Do it. Make me question my fundamentals. <laughs> I love it. I think it's a great mystery. Whenever Picard is fifteen steps ahead of everyone else, I as sinful as it is, I revel in that, and I just love everybody. Even the fucking android is scratching his head, just like, <laughs> well, whatever could the captain be planning here? Like, just nobody can see where it's going, and. It's it's the reason I love Poirot and Sherlock Holmes and all of that stuff as well, yeah. because it's that bit at the end where the detective describes the breakdown. He does, let's talk about the villain's plan. He does the whole breakdown and the villain just kind of the very nicely acquiesces and says, yes, no, you're right. And here's the bits that you missed and why I did it and whatnot. But it's, it's also one of the few episodes where Deanna's telepathy and empathy is noted and just like yeah diana would figure this out immediately and the alien actually does something about it and tortures her and that's just like this is that's what elevates this episode a bit for me is torturing diana because it turns it into like a horror story like yeah she is yeah being tortured by this this tune and it's great like but like i said i mean i don't know if phil bad's the right way but i'm just saying but like it's uh like he's human right like there's some or well he's not human but i mean he's, mm, he's not you know what I mean? and that was one of the things i was thinking yeah. of when you were talking about the sympathy part of it like you kind of feel bad for him but if he was to take like a younger form or if he wasn't yeah. to look so yeah. frail would we be mm. feeling the same way no, that's so that's true. like something that the alien chose to show us was this like elder frailty yeah because he wasn't 85 years old he is eternal apparently yeah. Yeah, and he can choose mortal. whatever he wants he can he could look like whatever he wants to look like but you know the show wants us to perceive that moment in that particular way which is really interesting yeah. and I, I like the storytelling too like so when data 
does the manifest thing and he's like, these are who these people are. They're 82 and 85 and they're mm. botanists and blah, blah, blahs. Like that is not true, but is true at the same at the same time. So the show is giving us the information that they want us to to mm-hmm. say, oh, that's true. When in actuality, it's not true. And then there's these little hints like something nefarious is going on. And I think you're absolutely right, Ian. Without the Deanna Troy being tortured part, mm. this I think wouldn't be as interesting. Oh, I agree. Because there's not really a stake in it for the crew yeah. as much as just figuring out what happened, like why there's all these people that aren't there any longer, but like their Picard own wants crew to member. rescue Deanna. He knows that yeah. they have, it's not a coincidence. They probably leave if nothing's wrong with Deanna, right? So Exactly, yeah. yeah there's no reason for them to it. stay. Well, yeah. Because they go and they look and they're like, yeah, everyone's dead. There's a couple people here. They're, they're happy. They don't want to come. They have their own agency, so we're not going to like make them come mm-hmm. with us. But then there's this, the, the only thing that hooks them there is that one of their own members is going to go insane. That tune, man, that it, I, just, it's I so, can't like, unhear it. It's horror, so sinister. Isn't it? It's so bad. Like, it's just, there's nothing wrong with that tune, but it is sinister as hell. Like, and maybe that's because I remember this episode from when I was a lot, lot younger, like probably under 10, and just it being one of those episodes oh, yeah. that was. I don't like the scenes where Danae is... Uh, Danae. I need to stop calling her Danae where Deanna is being tortured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like I said, I, yeah. I, I don't know if I... I think I said this at the beginning. I, I I didn't really care for this episode. Or I... Well, that wasn't it. I just didn't... It didn't register with me, I think. And it was one that I would keep here getting brought up like on podcast and stuff I'd read. It was like the one a lot of people would bring up as, you know, this is one people don't really talk about. And so I gave it another chance. Like, oh yeah, no, I I get that. And I think it's just, I think it's that character of Kevin. It's just such an interesting villain. I mean, I love the Borg and Romulans and stuff like that. I mean, that's fun, but like, I don't know. They don't have a lot of, I don't know. This is just a more interesting kind of, I like villains with like layers upon layers of, Yeah, it's not just a simple, I'm a madman and I want, you know, it's like a Bond villain Mm -hmm. where it's like, I want all the water in the world or something. It's, it's yeah. kind of like <laughs> in X Men when mm-hmm. uh, Jean Grey becomes Phoenix. Yes. It's mm-hmm. not like she means to just destroy yeah. things. It's just like this something comes out of her that she can't control. And here, this creature's like he knows he's they or whomever know that they're powerful and go to all this great effort to not exert their power to hurt anyone. But then in their grief, they went nuts yeah. and they obliterated fifty billion people. So <laughs> that um, pissed me off. It's interesting because you you find this out at the end, like you know, the power of this this creature, uh, and you're realizing that the the other thing that makes this particular episode interesting is that the Enterprise has no one to save here. It's literally mm. just we just walked into something, and all we want is to walk away intact. Right. So exactly, there's no. It's a cat game and mouse here. game. Yeah. Uh, until that moment it's a cat and mouse game until and, and it's it fully banks on which is, is going to go into resistance so i won't spend time here but it fully banks on this being being uh having some kind of a moral compass because oh, picard 100%. is like he's just full in on like i'm just going on a hunt here guys it's like holy shit i hope he doesn't <laughs> q snap me out of existence because uh-huh. he absolutely could yeah it's it's for me it's the cleverest part of the story leaning into not just the he has a problem with killing people, that he's a full-on pacifist. He does not believe that violence is the answer. You should not fight under any circumstances. And I buy it. That's what, Because that's a thing. That's a way of living. And Picard says it like, that is your given right. You don't have to fight in any conflict. And it makes his motivations completely make sense as to why he hasn't destroyed the mm-hmm. Enterprise, why he hasn't used his infinite amounts of power because of this really fundamental belief that he he holds so so true it, mm-hmm. it makes it a great mystery um jonathan pick out some other moments that that you love some individual bits well you guys talked about troy uh like we were talking about while we were watching it uh even though this is a pretty dire i, I mean dark is yeah i'd say it's dark but it's also a little oh, dour dark. anything with but, genocide in it is dark. but you still are <laughs> able to have comedy with like wharf and you know oh, that's just man. they were they were able to throw in some good wharf moments um it's so there's great. a lot of uh I, I love how on next generation like it seemed like almost like 90 percent of the time when they had one of those moments where, okay we got to transition out of this scene it's always Riker staring at the camera like that's just <laughs> and there's like yeah. six of those in this show like in this episode alone close up on the Riker helmet yeah um. it's like we got to just show Riker I don't know why we're showing Riker. his big blue um, eyes 
This was uh, this was short hair Gates McFadden t- era. I didn't. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. It's a new look. Yeah. Was the beard third season or was that season two for Riker? I can't. Third, uh, no, season two. Okay. It is season two, definitely. But it looks a bit different. Like it's a yes. bit fuller in season two. Yes. They don't get the shape of it. It's a little more um, groomed. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Um, the they Wolf don't get moment. it correct. So what do you mean just... correct? It's just not the way that you like it. Okay, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. beard is the correct beard. And <laughs> I have to say, every time I see Wesley, I always feel so bad for Will Wheaton, probably because I've also like, I've seen some documentaries with him and stuff over the last couple of years. And he wrote that book recently, just kind of talking about mm-hmm. how he was treated um, yeah. as a child actor and like he was just taking it's a crazy. job and like all these like fans were like sending just him wailing on him sending him death threats and all kinds of stuff and it's just like <sighs> it's this crazy. poor kid and so when I ever see him like in one of these episodes I'm just like what is going through his head right now like he's probably like this, is, I... this isn't worth it <laughs> like, I don't... yeah this isn't these 10 like me counting yeah. from one warp one to warp nine is not worth it I... but and I, I wonder if that's why he didn't get more to do and why he eventually I don't know. Left or, as well. It yeah. just it sucks. I can't yeah, blame him. Sucks. If he chose to leave on his own, I can't blame him at no, all. I, totally you know, fair. This isn't worth it. Um, You mentioned the wolf moments. It's I've used this in outtakes on cinema scenes. It is one of the all-time wolf moments. Just, oh, good tea. <laughs> yeah. Nice house. It's so, <laughs> I love that. His little Klingon pinky out as he like, sips the tea. It's so great. It's so I good. like when he makes it's the comment so, so too. There was said so, I can't remember what it was specifically he was talking about, but he's just like, Yes, most they probably didn't expect someone as thorough as me or something like that. Oh, they're trying to detect that <laughs> he's talking about the Andorian yes, commander. Yes. That, or the, the commander that was trying to find the Andorians. I was like, Yes, well the Andorians didn't have to contend with somebody as thorough as me. <laughs> That's what it was. And of course, it's just a setup because yeah. in the next scene the ship turns back up. So it's all eyes on war. And he's like, yeah. oh, I fucked up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, he's uh he's my favorite next generation <laughs> character, and uh I and I I loved his transition to D Space Nine. I was kind of worried that wouldn't work, but it it did. And what man, just just to get on a tangent, but like the cast of DS Nine were not happy about well, his addition. Well, no, and I I, I can't blame. Them. They were like, he's coming in to save the day because well, and he's the probably getting paid going more. To shit. It, it's yeah, it's a lot of things. Of course he is. Uh, that's like yeah. even uh, season two of Star Trek uh, Next Generation. Uh, Diana mm. Moldar, you know, she came yeah. in to replace Gates, got paid more. And, you mm-hmm. know, because that's usually how it happens. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Ryan on Voyager, that Ooh. caused... Yeah, I heard uh-huh. her and that Mulgrew didn't friction. become friends till well after the series ended. I don't know if that's true, but that's, that's the That's the rumor yeah. that it was way, way, way later. Yeah, so no, I can't only imagine. But sorry, yes, we got no, way definitely. late. No, back to... Back to this, I mean, that's going to happen with Star Trek, yeah. isn't it? 800 episodes, yeah. you're going to find Yeah, tangents. lots, especially between the two of you who have so many <laughs> points of reference. Nerds. And honestly, it's really, really cool. Well, it just kind of shows like these themes and these things pop up in other places. Mm-hmm. So again, Star Trek really like qualifies itself over and over again. So. Yeah, absolutely. There's um, there's just a couple of nice little touches that I really love. Like near the beginning when they're in the briefing and Deanna is obviously like in some pain. And it's just the directing of Riker, who doesn't have any lines. Oh yeah, just he's just totally and looks at her and is he's fixed like on eyes her, on her, oh, making sure she's okay. in pain. It's incredible. Like as much as we don't get enough Deanna Riker kind of resolution during the series, I no. know it happens in the movies, but in the series we don't. Yeah, but, but it is littered with these moments, like when Riker gets a new girlfriend or something. Yes, he goes to Deanna and asks permission. And it's just moments like that I, I love to bits. They're, they're so great. And their relationship is so much more interesting on the show than it. Because I just feel like they rushed everything in the movies. It's like, oh, let's just marry him. I mean, yeah, like, completely. where did that come from? You know, like, yeah. <laughs> Surprise. It kind of almost goes against the way they were on the show together. Like, I I, I don't know. Does. That's a whole other yeah. thing. But no, you're right. I, that moment, I did notice that. That's uh, not something I had probably thought about before. Yeah, that was a really sweet scene. And, and I like that scene, too, because they also faded like Picard's instructions into the background. So they did this nice thing where the audio fades out and Picard, is, you're talking about the debriefing on, you know, what they're going to do with these two people down on the planet. It becomes background noise and it sort of like goes over. It was just really well done in the storytelling aspect. Mm. I have the subtitles on so I could still read what Picard was saying but if the subtitles weren't on it's just like it would be really hard to pick out and you're being overtaken by Deanna Troy being like tortured by this you know music I liked how also when Picard comes and sees her in the quarters I like how that scene's written where 
he's still like he's her captain like he's her boss or whatever mm-hmm. it's it's like he's concerned but he's also like very yeah. professional like the way he talks to her and stuff and i which is interesting because i think now just the differences in newer track versus older track even though mm-hmm. the newer track takes place in the older track a lot of the times yeah before, uh, everyone's yeah. just having casual conversations like mm-hmm. like the captain and like an ensign just have like casual conversations and i'm not saying this is a positive or negative but it's just something that i noticed watching the older series because there's definitely much more of a hierarchy like picard and troy i mean they have like a i mean they, they're not like not friends but it is still more of an employee and an employer kind of kind yeah, of conversation 100%. versus the way Riker would you know have a conversation with her or you know. cisco and picard are pretty much like top tier at distancing yes. themselves from from everybody that's beneath them and i'm definitely yeah. like i'm saying i'm not saying that's a negative in the new series i'm just saying no, it's, it's just a it's, command it's a very style, noticeable uh, a difference and definitely like the original series i mean you know kirk just told you what to do and you did it right and then oh man kirk was like offended if you got near him with a like yeah. a journal he was like i have to sign this fuck you five phases like he just didn't want to give anyone the time of day oh uh, good amazing times. um on the on the sound design thing this is the first time that i'm listening and it's really interesting that i'm listening to these episodes with headphones on and like decent headphones and there is like something extra that you get so that tune in particular is extra sinister the way that it's introduced and there's also this like pulsing wave that's underneath it that it's almost like illustrating how it's being pumped from the planet into danae's brain Mm -hmm. i never would have heard damn it into diana's could you change your name Yes. I've never or, done or, this before. It's only No, this, this is the first time that you've struggled so hard. <laughs> this is insane. Into Deanna's brain. Um and I just it's yeah, it's just an interesting thing. Did, who I is, up but hey, that. who is the character? There is that character on Discovery that reminds me of Danae though. Um I think she left though now. I don't think she's on it anymore, but the Like the really quirky one? Yeah. The one that Oh what the um, the, Tilly? Yes, Tilly. The one with red hair? Yeah, yes. Tilly. She is she's absolutely Danae. Yeah. <laughs> she is I can't pure wait to chaos. I don't know who that is, but that's so, I, I'm excited. Tilly. But we don't I'm, have to go, we don't have to go there if you want to stay unfocused. I'm no, just we'll saying. Stay focused. What I will say is that quite fittingly, Tilly is the first character to drop an F bomb in any Star Trek episode. True story. Hell yeah. So yeah, hundred yes. percent. That's yeah, it's definitely Danae. I wanted to say about that scene too with Picard, if I before we kind of move on, uh, um uh when you're talking about like professionally going to visit Deanna. What I liked mm. about how that was written was he was honoring like you're really good at reading this. I'm really good at reading people and I can tell when someone's in pain. And it was just like this really cool way of going just, you know, Picard is a human. Uh he's very diplomatic, but his character is so like you said respectful of his crew. Um as sinful as his character is in this episode for other reasons, yeah. that was a really cool way for him to to say, I know that you're good at what you're doing, but I gotta like check in on you, make sure you're, yeah. make sure you're good. I respect your, um, your abilities here, but I kind of know that something's up, and I need you to be on the ball. I always yeah. forget Deanna's not human because, like, cause yeah, she, she's not. She just straight up, other than well, she's the eyes, partial, right? Huh? Right? She's partially human, right? She's half human. Yeah. Oh, that's right. She is half human. Her dad is human. Yeah. But still, but, but Beta um, Zeds don't really look that different, though. Like, No, they don't. No, it's just no. the black eyes. That's yeah, it. that's it. Because Luxana doesn't look. Luxwana. Lux, I always say that wrong. Like the hardest name in all of Star Trek. Luxwana. Luxwana. Yeah. Luxwana. It's, it's a half silent W. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just says half of it. <laughs> yeah. The computer voice. That's it. No wonder that doesn't like drive Deanna insane just like everywhere I go I can hear my mother's yeah voice. that's a good point I that I never thought about that that's hilarious <laughs> even if she went to like deep Amazing. space nine she'd be screwed it's still it's still her voice another thing that I really loved uh about this episode before we move on is the painting we kind of all talked about while we were watching it but oh yeah so when the episode mm, very first yes. starts and it kind of we zoom in on this destroyed planet and there's just like a little patch of green and then it shows the away team beaming down um it's this painting right wasn't that a painting oh 100 percent. star trek did this so oh, yeah. so so much it was cheaper to they commissioned artists to draw murals and then just overlay real footage over top, top of, of it yeah. they even do it in the movies yeah matte yeah painting, that's it. yeah and I, I think like we lose some of that in now with the cg yeah. or even just being able to take like realistic photos and then just do cg on top of the photos and then yeah uh, which makes it look super, super cool, but we've kind of don't get to see the beauty of paintings. Like there are some incredibly talented people out there that made sets 
and movies. Think about like Lord of the Rings, all those miniatures that were made mm-hmm. for Lord of the Rings. Uh, so I don't know. I just I really love being able to see a little bit of the storytelling. I love that so much because like the entire Klingon homeworld is painted like the interior of the Borg ship when they're on best of both worlds and they zoom out 90% of that is a matte painting where they've just added lights in um it's so so clever and i don't think you could get away with and then the it hd today, but... in the hd remasters they just went back over them and made them pop even mm-hmm. more it's yeah really cool. that's it they didn't pull them out it's great something else i liked which is mm-hmm. fun to be able to say is even though this was like made so long ago is i still like some of the clothing like mr yeah. uh mr uxbridge like his mm. shirt was pretty cool looking don't you think it is i like it's the kind of like cool. the buckles little and side the buckles big neck. the cowl the cowl yeah, I don't know. You call him Mr. Uxbridge. On? That made me laugh. I don't know why. Like, what, what is excuse it? me, Mr. Uxbridge. Can we? <laughs> can I have one of these apples? Kevin, sorry, Kevin. Please, please sir, can I have my species Listen, back? <laughs> if he's out there somewhere in the universe and yeah. he's like this all power being, I'm respectfully calling well, him Mr. Yeah, Uxbridge. Yeah, for sure. Respectfully. <laughs> no, yeah, like the last, like, where that alien is, his left's like, uh, Mr. Uxbridge, um, I had nothing to do with this thing on your planet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was just making I'm a pacifist. Like, what, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's something amazing. out. Uh, it is mind boggling that he just poofs, got all of them. If there's one that's chilling out on Romulus, or there's what? someone that's doing some weeding, there's some kids that are learning algebra, he just poofs all of them out of existence. It is mind bending to like think about the scope but, of that. I mean but Q can do that too. That's interesting. Like there's like and then like the mm. traveler. Isn't the traveler immortal? The traveler is semi immortal. They live for a huge, huge, huge okay. amount of time. Okay. And they kind of exist at all points. But I don't think they have the ability to snap people out of existence and I, think I wonder why the, they didn't just the make him a Q that... though. Like I just it's interesting that they created a whole new race and I think... we never see him again. <sighs> yeah, I think it was deliberate to yeah. stay original because Q, they never really should have invented Q because they basically just turned off all of the buttons. They're like, you can do everything. Like, there's nothing you can't yeah, do. It's Superman, and it's the same for same for this guy. Um, so then you end up comparing everything to 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 Q, and why couldn't Q come and save the day and stop mm-hmm. Wolf three five nine or whatever? Yeah. Something else I really loved was the battle. We did talk about that, but the mm. the battle between the two ships was really interesting. Like. The, the it's like on screen it shows this this ship and then the the crew is saying how magnificent it is and how you know damaging it looks and how you know imp- imposing mm. it is and all of these things which is which is one thing but then whenever the visuals show you how it's just beating the shit out of the enterprise yeah. you're like oh <laughs> it's gorgeous there's some good and, lasers in there yeah they had we had lasers we had a really interesting like geometric looking shield mm. on the bad guy ship Right where it's mm. like, ooh, that was kind of cool looking, and it's like telling us that. Well, I think Jordy was like, it's absorbing, uh, or someone said it was absorbing all of the, the energy. Mm. So it was just incredibly powerful warship that may have all been a figment of their imagination, and or the alien created out of thin air. I don't know how that works. Oh yeah, no, no, the alien just he the Dow just uh, Mr. Oxbridge, sorry, just Mr. invented Uxbridge. that. Yeah, just brought it into existence. What yeah. I love about that, and I'm almost certain it's deliberate, is that that shield graphic is the the same graphic that they use for the original borg shields so as in the individuals oh. they have personal shields and when they adapt to the phase of fire they throw up this prismatic mm-hmm. thing that absorbs all of the energy so i think it's kind of a nod to that's how this type of shielding works mm-hmm. and it would have this graphic and it's that kind of consistency you just don't see as much anymore like i just i love that there's no way that was an accident it's it's so so similar yeah, that it. was pretty that was pretty fun, you know. Anytime that the Enterprise gets into a battle and you actually think for a split sec like this isn't going well, you just instantly know storytelling wise, okay, so time is gonna reverse so that they don't all die. Yeah. Or like what's gonna <laughs> happen because there's no way they're gonna blow about, but you still felt I still felt that tension of they're really outmatched here. So what's what is happening? And uh, that leads me more into my sins. So I think that's everything that I really loved about this episode. Awesome. Amazing. Well, with that, let's head to engineering for this instance is futile. Battle stations, everyone. There's a fictional ship coming at us. Wait, they're all fictional. This one's especially fictional. (laughs) Warning. Warp core collapse in 10 seconds. This is the part of the show where we re-engage our sin brains, remind ourselves that no TV show is without sin, even our beloved Star Trek. This is the fun stuff. What have you got first, Danae? 
or Deanna. Oh. Or <laughs> whatever your name is. Um, I can't tell if I like it or don't like mm. it. You um, can still sin it, even if you like it. That I know. Yeah, I know. Um, but there was a... I was really off put because I think we're earlier on in the series mm. that every time it was put something on screen, we it was like the old way of saying it and it was put it on the main viewer. So they didn't say on screen. They said main viewer. Oh, interesting. And I was super distracted by just it being an earlier way of saying oh. some of this like techno babble that was going on. Yeah, because some of it hadn't been locked in place. It's like put exactly. on the view screen. It wasn't that. It was put on the main yeah, viewer. Put it, you exactly. know, pull up on the main viewer. Put up on the view screen. I'm like, well, what happened to on screen? Just on screen. Oh, that's what you that's say. Amazing. You say on screen. Yeah, hundred <laughs> like, percent. The same thing happened to me when I went back, but it was reversed. So I watched TNG before I watched the original series, and it bugged me whenever Kirk would say warp factor something. I was like, what is it with this factor bullshit? Just say warp warp four or whatever. Like, where's this factor coming from? Picard never said warp factor. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. weird the things we look into. That's amazing. Jonathan, what was your biggest sin of the episode? Oh, <laughs> biggest. Um, or not necessarily biggest, whatever you want to go with. I will say Kevin, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uxbridge. Mr. Uxbridge's... Uh, <laughs> I love that. His, uh, his powers. <laughs> the episode title should have been Mr. and <laughs> Mr. Mrs. Uxbridge. Uxbridge. Yeah. It's like, it's like Mr. Belvedere. Streaks on the yeah. China. Never mind. Um, <laughs> Kevin's powers, like the extent of Mr. Uxbridge's powers. I it, well, This is what I don't understand. So he can he can clearly like use his powers into space, like from the planet, because he messes he with... He create that He ship. messes with Deanna. Yeah. He also, to, to get the other ship to match... With the Enterprise, he's got to know how oh, how much uh-huh. the Enterprise can accelerate. He's got to know not to blow it up. Like, exactly yeah. what it takes yeah. to scare them, but not blow so, them the fuck up. Yeah. But he acts genuinely surprised every time they beam down. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. you know they're you still there. Coming. Like, you have to know they're still there. You know yeah. Deanna's a telepath. And it's fine. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's being... Pick- yeah, exactly. But that, I mean, that's being... But I'm just saying, but that is something like they don't even attempt to answer. They're just like... It's being picky, but that's what we do exactly. when we sin, so it's okay. So that's like the probably the, like the biggest thing I notice. Like I just don't really get like, and this happens with Q too. I mean, there's a lot like you know in those Q episodes, there's always things where mm-hmm. like, well, why didn't he just do this? That they just try to throw it off, like, well, he's finicky or whatever. But like this yeah, guy was like, desperate get... to get them away, so I just uh-huh. I don't know. It seemed weird that he would be. I don't know how you would ever surprise Mister Uxbridge. Like if you were dating his daughter, he would know what you were doing. So. <laughs> He would know before you were born. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So before you realize it, you'd you'd know that you're a figment of his imagination. It's like, no, no, the original me died because I wronged. If he, yeah, if that if he has a daughter, she's gonna be a cat person because there is no dude that's gonna come close to her because <laughs> she'll they'll nope. be too afraid of the dad. It is one of the the big sins that I have is that with all of his powers, like he said, he even he tried to trick the Hux, Huxums or whatever they are. Yeah, I just feel like he gave up with the Enterprise a bit too quick. Like he could have done more to try. Oh yeah, and trick them like he could have. I I don't know. I feel like there was definitely more that he could have done. But the bottom line is that we need to get to the end of the mystery. Like, there's not even an obligation for him to explain himself once he cures Deanna. He could just be no. like, "Yep, cured. That, yeah. Bye. See you later. My conscience yeah. is clear. I don't need to clarify." Yeah. Let's just cut to the biggest sin of all: uh, loving yeah. a human. Oh. <laughs> like- <laughs> True. True story. You, know, you have every just- species to pick from. <laughs> you didn't pick one of the blue ones. No, my first sin that I actually wrote down was at the very beginning when they're coming in on this planet. So they've got their mission and they come in on this planet and Picard tells that whoever is operating, like whoever's flying into something along the lines of bring us in, but don't hit the three moons. Like they would know that that was like, like they needed to be told not to hit a moon. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, don't, don't crash into the moons. That's like, that's like saying, Hey, let's, let's pull into this Sonic drive through, but, don't run into the menu board. Like <laughs> it's pretty obvious, you don't know. Yeah, people taking your order. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It's like there, there isn't there anything else that you could tell us. Uh, but it's just like one of those things that like thinks that's pretty obvious, Captain. Yeah, thanks for that. Mm-hmm. You, your turn, Jonathan. Um, I don't. I and I brought this up, and you guys told me to write it down. I don't understand away missions a lot of the time because I know the whole <laughs> thing. You don't send the captain down first, but like in this one in particular, yes. they sent five senior officers down there. It's like. Did Crusher let the head nurse know every project she had going on? Because what if, you know, 
It is crazy. Yeah. You've got Riker, who's like the head of personnel and the first officer. Worf, who's the head of security. Yeah. The chief engineer, which I never understand why he's ever Maybe on an away mission. six, because wasn't Data down there? Data too? was also there, who is your third in command. And Crusher, yeah. who like, everyone's dead already. Just send a nurse to do the yeah. to do the thing. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't like, matter. It, yeah, it makes no sense. Like... Because um, I feel, and I could be wrong. I feel like in the original series, it was usually just like maybe McCoy would go down and like Spock, but then like everybody else would, everybody else would be like red shirts or whatever. It was almost always Kirk, McCoy, and Spock. Yeah, well, that's it true. was Kirk some combination went down of those then, three. Kirk was always sense. down there, but uh, and then random red shirts. But then like they, and then they just sent Picard down there, not really knowing what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> so it's here you go. <laughs> it's like it's just a, him and Worf on their own as well. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just I don't I never I never quite get that because just if their molecules get mixed up, like you know, <laughs> if there's a transporter malfunction, all of a sudden you've lost five senior officers or six. <laughs> it has happened. Like people do have accidents. Um, while we're on that beam down to the planet thing, it's it is so I almost would have given it a pass, but they go through such a detailed analysis of this is where the people in the house mm-hmm. are. There's a malfunctioning gun there. Jordy does the um, the house looks like it's made of everything you would expect it to be made of. The vegetation is gone. Data does his thing, and then they miss the fucking tripwire. Like, what were you <laughs> scanning for? You saw a deactivated gun in the attic. They didn't miss it. But they you... saw it right before. It I just right before it happened. I'm just like that didn't come up on any of your scans, <laughs> like. Unbelievable. Maybe it was because it was so simple. Like they're looking for like really. I don't buy it. Like really bullshit. high. It was bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> but it was literally like a, a wire around a foot. Yeah, because but it was an under it was an underground switch. So Jordy just says there's a device that's underneath the the ground. It could have been, yeah. been a mine. Like they <laughs> yeah. don't know. It's like, emergency beam out. Get us out of here. Like it's <laughs> they are so dumb and so lucky at the same time that that was just a lasso. So great. <laughs> just All because lasso. we had to see Riker upside down. <laughs> Yeah, and then he says that silly line. He's like, I'm commander of the Enterprise yeah. while he's upside down, just hanging there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take you seriously. <laughs> he's like a tetherball. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I will say uh, in that scene, so they, they meet the uh, the elder couple that kind of comes out and they're looking like a little bit kooky and it totally reminded me of like the kooky old couples that you'll see in like Never Ending Story or Princess Bride, like yeah. have fun storm in the castle. Like they had that sort of vibe. <laughs> yes. So I would totally do that as the outtake on that particular Amazing. moment. Um, but in that scene, in that scene, I would also send Beverly just aggressively scanning someone for physical yeah. problems. Oh my um, goodness. Yeah. And how, uh, again, the idea here is that this creature is so powerful. He can create another human replica that would pass all of these physical scans can be, to can be transported has molecules transported to transport. and 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 still have memories yeah. and thoughts that are independent and like like that's fucking bonkers that's insane. just reassemble but, the colony as well if, if you want uh, exactly i guess it doesn't have a lot of personal relationships so they would all just be like replicas of his love i'm not sure but i'll send <laughs> beverly for just Without permission, just yeah. doing some scans that she probably should have asked permission to do. Mm-hmm. Well, I was but... kind of going to send the fact that it surprised her as well. Rashawn. She's like, "Oh, what are you? What are you but doing? She's a, what she's, is that? Like, she's never seen a tricorder before, really. Like, she knows what a replicator is, and she's confused what this standard issue Federation tricorder is doing. And to be fair, yeah. like, this is kind of a Beverly thing. Like, she'll just do autopsies when she's told not to, and. <laughs> I mean, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> she she doesn't give two fucks about any kind of authorization. No, she follows the science. She okay, okay, good point, intense. good point. Yeah, and she likes to have Jonathan. sex with candles, and you know. No, 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 we're not going back there. <laughs> you missed that episode, Jonathan. Sorry. <laughs> My thing was like, what if Picard is wrong? That was kind of the other thing I put. Yes, like, like that's the big because if he's wrong, like he just he this just, is so he bad. Just had he just two killed people everybody. Killed. Like. Yeah. Not just that, but probably the entire Enterprise. Yeah, like, yeah. He, yeah, he risks he, the he Enterprise. He risks everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even even being right, he risks a lot of stuff because like he doesn't know how Mister uh, Uxberg's gonna you know react. So. No, he's kind of yeah, he's banking on the pacifism. But I do like the plan because he he goes down there and clarifies that 
Uxbridge, sorry, Mr. Uxbridge is a pacifist and says, would you kill even for her? And gets him to say the words, no, I wouldn't. Oh, that's true. But even so, he knows at this point that he's capable of doing some shenanigans. So it's still a big risk. And he doesn't know at that point that he's wiped out an entire species. So yeah. he is capable of doing, like, what's one more ship? Like, yeah. he is very, very lucky. I mean, I guess you could also think that, like, he would have to deal with this because if he if he took out that ship, then there would be an investigation. Like where did the enterprise? Yeah, I, guess I mean, that's he could it. be yeah. thinking that far ahead. I don't know. I don't know. Also, I'm not trying to be funny, but like I would make my myself and my wife younger and like healthier and like <laughs> <laughs> just in better physical shape. You know, like I don't. Yeah, uh, and it would have been interesting too, right? Like if they had yeah. if they had hinted that that she wasn't real by her form changing just a little bit every time they came back because he was replicating it from memory like that would have been mm-hmm. really interesting like maybe yeah. the next time they come over she's a little bit younger bit or her wonky. hair is a different color yeah. or something oh, yeah. that would sort of I, indicate that but. i agree with what you were saying today though i think for the story to work i think you almost have to make that an elderly couple because i think i i yeah. think that's mm, if it's you, a great point because if you're gonna i think that's just you're gonna have an easier time sympathizing if it's like some like 35 yeah. year old like who looks like he's in a frat or something or was in a frat or <laughs> something i mean yeah you're more suspicious yeah like you you automatically feel bad for your grandparents that have lost everything yes. yeah like if you found yeah, out your grandfather killed 50 about. billion people you'd be like <laughs> well <laughs> well he's just old you know, it's what but fucking boomers <laughs> he didn't know what the button would do you know no um, the other baffling thing about Picard's plan is just, it's great, like, for TV, but not sharing it with anybody. Oh, well, that and never Riker, makes sense. That, that, ir- that always irritates it's me. It's insane. Riker and Worf, just like, shall we fire? Nope. Super casual. Yeah. Drop shields. Like, don't fire. Leave the planet. And they just all trust him, thankfully. But yeah, Picard's just like, I'm not going to clue in any of my yeah. people to this it, we're just gonna keep wild. you all in the dark it's so it, that is bad leadership well and you're you're risking that they're gonna think you're crazy or something and they're gonna pull like yeah. a, a you know amendment two or whatever it is <laughs> like <laughs> like you are relieved of your duties i don't know what that rule is but yeah yeah there should like he, he's it's clearly like you said for us yes mm. so that so that the mystery kind of continues and and I understand that but yeah that was one of the biggest but things for me too. they could be like hey guys I gotta go talk to you about something and then we just don't see that you know like you, yeah. you I mean there's easy yeah. ways to do it but they're just like something. they have 45 minutes you know with commercials to, to <laughs> they get all, all this in they all come out of the debrief room <laughs> and they're just like doing that like little like yeah. hand wiggle together <laughs> and like oh, oh, oh we got oh, an idea good <laughs> plan captain nicely that's, done that's an I mean you have to you know this is just I mean, this is at a time where we weren't having like 10 episode series that were yeah. All yeah. continuing off each yeah. other. So mm-hmm. uh, you just kind of had to give into this whole everything's going to be solved in uh, yeah. 45 yeah. minutes. Occasionally you got two episodes, but yeah. Uh, and it's worth it. I love seeing yeah. Riker confused. I love seeing Wolf yeah, confused. Yeah, that's fun. It's, it's fun. No, the absolutely. knock on the door. <laughs> it's like, yeah. um, Captain, are you fucking insane? Can you please yeah. tell me? Yeah, what and then and then at anything? the end, they're like, "Oh, he was right all along. He knew what he was." I'd still like, be like really questioning that, though. I'd still be like at the next meeting. So, what if you were wrong? What, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Can we just debrief about that? Was there a backup yeah. plan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would send the moment when they first are in the house and sh- and Data goes over for the for the little musical thing that kicks off the whole music mystery, mm-hmm. and um, Mrs. Umbrick. Bridge, Uxbridge, whatever. <laughs> she says, "Um, it's a music box. It's been in my family for generations. Uh, I think the easy sin there is like, that is not a box. Because <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's a music thing. <laughs> it is a musical item, yeah. but that is not a music box. <laughs> that is a torture device disguised as a musical ornament. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I love and, it when we get really petty. And then, of course, in that same series, since I did a silly one, I'll just do two, like, since we're talking about people not sharing important things, why wouldn't Deanna say in that debrief, I'm hearing music? Like, why oh, hold yeah. that to herself? It's such a strange thing. And I know it's to build a mystery, too, but she's literally sitting in a room going crazy. She's like, does anyone else hear that music? Because that could have been an interesting moment, too, where Data's like, <laughs> oh, replays man. it, you know, and says Just this opens because, his mouth and just, yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's it, that's it, you know, and in, <laughs> instead, like, we're piecing together these weird things that they, they are to, they all impact each other. So, mm. as a senior officer of the ship, when you have something like that that's happening, it you should share it with the people that are trying to solve this, this serious problem. So, I don't know. It was just yeah. another one where 
we're keeping information for the for the good of the story. Mm. Um, but if there's a deadly song that turns into an earworm, we all know the pain of that song, mm-hmm. which they allude oh, yeah. to, of course, in the dialogue of this mm. episode. And we all know that. And this kind of plays on what if it actually drives you mad? Uh, and that's kind of a really interesting thing to do. That this mm. this this episode could have also been called the deadly earworm. It just, really could have been. Although yeah. that's that probably has been done in the Rathacan. It's yeah. Like, oh, we're, we're going to get the ear things back to do the mind control. <laughs> I don't know. If I'm if I'm Diana or Danae, whatever. If I'm Diana, then I am 100% reporting anything in my mind because I'm a telepath. So if yeah. anything squiffy like that happens, there's a yeah. good chance it's to do with my psychic ability. She's an like, empath. Mm-hmm. Empath, I apologize. No, that's yes. Why did, wait, by the way, absolutely I asked this question while mm. we were watching it because I never yes. thought about it till now. Why does she, mm. why, why is she green? Like, why is her her outfit green? Or is it always green? Like, why? It's like a teal it's, color, yeah. right? Yeah, it's always been that tealy color. They always, so she, the answer is they wanted to put her in something sexy. Okay. Like, the color scheme for Diana doesn't make any sense at all until like season seven when she starts wearing a proper uniform. But this was purely to have something pretty to look at. And Marina okay. Sirtis Cause hated most of the costumes. Yeah, I've, I've heard her talk about that. She talks about that first season costume where it had like the belt on it. And she's like, they put the belt right where my fat was. She's like, so I mean, yes! like your, your eyes are about just this last drawn. Week. To my stomach. <laughs> an arrow. Yeah, an arrow right yeah. pointing at my, the bit I'm most insecure about. It's, yeah. Bod- body image is tricky, and they were not doing a good job of it. Like, there's a lot in the, the this era of Star Trek, especially with Jerry Ryan's costumes that are, I, I think a lot of people should have been spoken to about their motivations yeah, sure. and why they were doing certain things. No, I agree. I agree. And But what I, the main reason I was saying it, though, because I would think she would either be medical or she would be science. Like, I would think it would be one of those two. And science, she's 100% in, like, the medical yeah, field but medical's area because she's a counselor. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but if you're a counselor, you might yeah. not be a, like, you might not be a doctor. I mean, I'm... Right. You know. That makes sense, too. Maybe there's, like, a special color Maybe. for her or something. Mm. Yeah. I don't well, know. I don't know no, how they did medical just school to make, then. It's just to dress her up. Um, my last big one was the th- it's when Picard says we don't have a law to fit your crime. You fucking do. It's called genocide. Like we have a name for it. Like just because it's on a huge scale, it doesn't mean it isn't punishable. Yeah. It's like, well, you've killed enough people, therefore. But at the same time, I get that there is nothing they can do no. to him. They can put him in prison. Right. He will poof out. Like it is mm-hmm. completely up to him. I. It just still doesn't feel right that he's allowed to have his dream life, I guess, when he's murdered an entire species. But what are they going to do? I mean, that is kind of one of the... But exactly, I mean, it's still definitely do? like, we've got to wrap this up, so we're just going to say this. Mm. It would have been interesting to come it's back to It's just a strange him, line. But, you know, there's a lot of episodes like that where you'd be like, why didn't they come oh, back to this? Oh, are you kidding? Like, why didn't they come back to this guy when the Borg were attacking... Like, yeah, I know you're a yeah. pacifist, but could you just Hey, could you just we let help you us get off bit? on genocide. Could you help us out? <laughs> could you do us a solid hit? I mean, they'd be done. Please. But I guess yeah, that, that that's a whole, like, that's a, I mean, that's a whole, like, you know, uh, mine, whole, like, you know, what is it? Mine, landmine to go down. I don't know. That. Whatever that saying is, I can't think of it. But yeah. That's a There's 800 tricky. examples of species that could have been helpful. Yeah. Like, when do you stop? you know, destroying species, like what are the ones that are worth being completely destroyed? And I would, I would, I would jokingly sin, like how dare the show use Picard's uh, Achilles heel of tea against him in this one where she's like, <laughs> come in for tea. And I'm like, oh no, oh, don't yes, go in for tea. Oh yes, I would love tea. to have some tea. Don't go in for tea. Like it leads to that great wharf moment, of oh, course, man. that is the best meme ever. Good tea, nice house. It's which, great. He's a, uh, he's like, an Earl Grey guy, right? Yeah. yeah. You know how like on Etsy are these uh, these um websites where people make like really fun items for their home that are like these yeah. little cute oh, kind of cute things. Found some. I want to do like a cross stitch that just has like like a little yes. wharf with his pinky out, yes. and it's just like the cross stitch of like good tea, nice house, and yes. like put it. In, you know what <laughs> That's I mean? like your little welcome sign. That yeah. you come into. <laughs> nice. Good tea, it's, it's nice so house. Perfect. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> this is his trust pilot review for this planet. <laughs> nice. Uh huh. Yep. Amazing. Right. Any more sins, people? No. I mean, I, I, I've always, I just don't understand com badges. And there's a scene in this one where Riker just <laughs> throws his com badge at this woman. Like, I don't know. Are those not assigned yeah. to people? Like, can you? Do they have unlimited? One oh, hundred percent, they are. 
Yeah. And then there's so I mean, many you just things. just replicate a new one, there's, but they are a song. Yeah, and there's yeah. so many things about, like, it. different actors did different things with them. Some would tap twice. Some wouldn't tap at all. You know, it was just like, it never... Oh, 100%. Yeah, it never we makes sense. We talked about this last week as well, just whether, when they're on the ship and they don't tap the combat yeah. to say, like, Picard to the bridge or something, they could just say Picard to the bridge and the computer knows yeah. to Google that shit and put it into the right room. So it's so inconsistent. Yeah, it really how is. How do they work? How do they work? I also don't know how you set a phaser on stun, but that didn't happen in this one, so... I'll just get it off your chest now while we're here, yeah. <laughs> You'll never have me back, so... I guess just like... It's like no, we will 100% have you back. We've got to think of something even more sinful, because this episode was too good. This was... was. Um, yeah, great, great episode to pick. It's really super Yeah, good. I like it a lot. Next time we'll do Cupid. <laughs> Well, Cupid is a great one, but we would have to do the Captain's Holiday first. Oh, that's right, because Vash is in Vash that. Vash is introduced. Yeah. Ah, stupid And Vash. if you know Star Trek, you know what they're talking about. Yes, and if you, you do. don't, you're just smiling and nodding <laughs> along like I am, and that's okay. Okay, Jonathan, where can people find you on all of the socials and stuff if they want to talk about Star Trek? I am on Twitter, at Sam Loomis 13 and... Uh, um, I am on Letterbox. I think you just type in my name, but my Letterbox uh, link is in my Twitter handle. So if you go to at Sam Loomis 13, you will also have my Letterbox. That's really that's really all. I, do. I mean, I think I have an Instagram account, but I don't really use it. So uh, so I would say Twitter or Letterbox are the best places to holler at me. Your Instagram is just a load of pictures of Garrick from Teen Space Yeah, Nine. Garrick in, uh, in bikinis. It's, Garrick it's weird. Page. It's, it's very it's very <laughs> it's very specific fetish. That's amazing. Well, thanks for joining us, Jonathan. I hope you had uh, a good time. I had time a great time. I love Star talking Trek about Star Trek. Trek. Yeah, I feel like we could do it for hours. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. I'm Ian Whittington, and I too admire acts of unmitigated gall. Uh, it's I don't favor the coincidence theory from me. Jonathan Watkins, good tea, nice house. <laughs> and as always, live long and pod spa. Thanks for listening. Want to connect with the show? Our hailing frequencies are always open through captainspod at cinemasins.com. Like, comment, and subscribe on your podcast player of choice, and be sure to visit cinemasins.com. Yeah, I'm excited for um, Danae to watch Survivors. I've kind of pre-warned her that she's going to get fucked up by one part of it. <laughs> yeah, I um, I was just trying to think of one that... It is kind of funny, though, that the first three you've done have been the three that you're doing. I don't know. It's just, it's hilarious. Like, no yeah, best of both worlds. it's super random. Uh-huh. No super cause and effect. Random. <laughs> no, whenever the last time I did a rewatch was when I probably watched Survivor. So that was probably, like, six years ago. Or so. It was whenever the Blu-rays came out. Oh, yeah, that was about that was about that time. I bought those as soon as they landed. They're so, so good. Yeah, I waited. Like, I bought the set. I waited till the set was available. But uh, mm. but apparently, like, those didn't do as well as they were hoping. At least the last few seasons didn't. Because I think that's why... I think Deep Space Nine and Voyager, I think they'd be really expensive because of the way they shot them. They're mm -hmm. not as easy to transfer to, to uh, Blu-ray. But I, I... So I don't know that that's ever going to happen. But I feel like they could at least do like a cleanup or something. I mean, just something to make it look, because it looks better on Paramount than it does, than it did on Netflix, uh, Voyager and yeah. Deep Space Nine. No, but, agreed. But it's still, it's, it, it's not great. I wonder if it's because they were more special effects heavy as well. Like there's a lot more to update. It, it's whatever they shot them on. They shot Deep Space Nine, because like, like the original series, I guess was shot on film. And then mm -hmm. uh, Enterprise was digital and uh, I don't know. I guess TNG was film. I don't know. But I, I, I don't know enough about this. But I, my friend who's really into Star Trek, he told me it was just they were shot on video or something. It was something mm. about the way they were shot, how the effects were done. It just made it hard. So it's not it's not like it's not as simple of a process to just and, and to be fair, like I don't think Next Generation was that. I mean, they put a lot of work into that. But mm -hmm. um, I guess because of the original negative is more usable than than Deep Space Nine and yeah, Voyager. Somehow. I think it can be done, but. It's just, do they want to put? Do they want to put the money in? For the two parters, I really want to do. If I was going to do one, it would probably be a chain of command because I want Danae to know that the there are four lights. That's got to be stuff. the best. 
like yeah. one and two together. Mm-hmm. I like it's Redemption, so I think, more than most people. You like Time Zero more than most people. I love Time Zero. I just think it's one of those really dumb season six adventures. <laughs> I I love like the last five minutes of the first part of Descent. Like I, that makes you feel like you've just watched a great episode, but it's kind of boring up until that point when you, yeah. you realize it's lore. Mm-hmm. And then the second part, it's not, not very good. Unification, that's one. That's two-parter, isn't it? Unification's Spot. a two-parter, yeah. That's yeah. when... I love that, because that's when I think Sela comes back, and is it that uh, or Redemption, where Data takes command of the ship, and that commander is like, I'm not going to listen to you because you're an android. I don't remember now. Oh, man. So he takes control of one of the ships, and the first officer just outright ignores Data entirely. And they just like gives him a dressing down and says, you will listen to me. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> they just pretending to be angry, but he looks angry. One other thing about Best of Both Worlds is they never bring back... Uh, uh, her, uh, Shelby. Yeah. Shelby. Was I her, love Shelby. It, Michelle. No. Shelby's great. I wish we'd seen Shelby. I mean, she turns up in Lower Decks, but um, we don't see her actually well, in yeah, TNG. That's true. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and you mean, yeah, Lower Decks, the, the show. The show, yes. not the episode. Oh, no. <laughs> I listened to Sub Rosa. That was hilarious. I'm I'm shocked Danae kind of liked it. <laughs> Man, I couldn't have been more surprised when she was just like, I kind of liked it. I was like, I what mean, the fuck? What is going on? I was trying to think of like, I mean, I'm sure there's some batshit episodes of Star Trek that I enjoy on a weird, but not, it's not that one. That's not one. No, I, I had a better appreciation for it after talking to Danae, but I think she, so I don't think this made it into the outtakes, but after the show, we started reading into like the background of like what the the writers thought of it, and what we were reading into it was nothing what they intended. Like they were literally just gotcha. like, "Yeah, let's make a sex episode." I just, so they weren't doing I just anything about watching feminism it and or then anything. Being like, "There's only like seven episodes left, guys. Like this is this, <laughs> this is-, is what you're doing." And there were a lot of those towards the end of this because there was like Eye of the Beholder, and uh, wasn't yeah, that that's the- a weird one? That's oh, the I will tell you one. one. That is insane that I kind of enjoy is uh, Genesis. <laughs> mm, great episode. It's great. That's going to be one of the next it's, ones that I show today. It's great. It's crazy, though. It's insane. Masks. Masks, I kind of dig, too. It's Everyone so fucking Everyone hates weird. masks so much, but I, I like it. Like, Brent Spiner is just playing 14 different people. He's great. Yeah, yeah. He it's, gets it's such a chance to stretch in that episode. That's seven season two, though, right? I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's season seven. Genesis definitely. definitely is. Yeah. And then, I, the Beholder, is. Oh, yeah, because that's Troy and Morph, which was yeah, which is strange. That was bad. Um, well, and they even say it was bad. Like they neither one oh, of the was, actors liked they, it. And no, they never revisit it as well. I I saw her the last Star Trek convention I ever went to was Marina Sirtis. This is like ninety five, and mm-hmm. uh, she said that so she said something like someone had someone on our writing staff had watched Beauty and the Beast too much as a kid or something. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> Is there a good Ferengi episode? No. Like on DC? I, I mean, like super Ferengi based. Uh, House of Quark was like kind of okay. Yeah, but- that's okay, but that's because there's Klingons. But the one yeah. where they, the little green men one, where they go. Oh, that take is, that's what the, it's called. It little, I think it's called yeah, Little I Green Men. I think it is men, called Little it? Green Men. Yeah. No, that one's really good. Yeah, that's, that one's uh, great. I like that one. That's a good time. I forget story. that's a Ferengi episode, but I guess technically it is. Yeah, well, it's. But they're not good even on like Next Generation. And then like on Voyager, they like brought the Ferengi. I was like, what? Like, oh, that's, wanted to that's see Ferengis. insane. It's insane. Mackenzie, my daughter, she has seen the first two of the Kelvin movies. Mm-hmm. And I think that's all she's watched. She really liked the first one. She thought Into Darkness. I think she liked it. I can't mm-hmm. remember now. Our first movie's great. We haven't watched so Beyond good. yet. But uh, yeah, my wife, uh, the 29, 2009, that's one of my wife's favorite movies of all time. So, awesome. uh, so she has yeah, good taste. She does. Well, sometimes, but uh, that movie. <laughs> To explore strange new worlds. To boldly go where no one has gone before. <laughs> it's my happy place. Oh. It's so good. Shoo. 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 They really didn't Shoo. have to put a lot of imagination into these original no. opening credits. <laughs> Shoo. 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 DS9's the worst because it's just like rotating around. Like the <laughs> space not... station can't move. It's just well, the worst is Enterprise. The, the worst is Enterprise. Get out. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Enterprise is fine. Faith it's been the a heart. long road. Do-do-do-do-do. Getting from there to here. <laughs> One of my favorite wharf moments is... 
not in a good episode. It's that episode Cupid where they do the Robin Hood thing. But war- the way Michael Dorn delivers the line, I am not a merry no, man. I am not a merry man. <laughs> it's so and great. Just in when Geordie's like fucking around with the little like banjo thing. Oh, and yeah. just in one <laughs> fluid movement just goes whack and just yeah. decks it across that tree. So, it's great. And then, then he apologizes. He's just yeah. like, sorry. <laughs> Ian probably has like that other like that warship. He's probably got like a model of that, even though it's like only in this episode. Oh, he! <laughs> my favorite thing that Ian is doing right now is trying to resist purchasing a 3D printer. Oh, so wow. you know he's just like he's interested in 3D printing, and yeah. so he's been looking at 3D printers. And then when we were on Twitch the other day, I found a 3D printer. Like they they just literally it's a nonstop stream of everybody that's. 3D printing and streaming it and it's like one location and just all these really passionate people this this person was star was like a Star Wars uh fan and so mm-hmm. they're doing like Star Wars stuff and so he's like super tempted because there's all these Star Trek ships that you can 3D print and he's just like <laughs> I could have all the ships today space the final frontier <laughs> these are the voyages I, I, I should have put it on mute and just had Danae saying it for me <laughs> yeah right or Babs yeah <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, space is a frontier there. There's some fucking stars. 